Surprise, surprise. Long time no see for this old truck I'm about to show you. It's a beaut though. But I have this funny feeling. This truck is gonna be probably one of my absolute favorite first gens we've ever done when I'm done with this thing. What is up guys, welcome back to another video here on Loud and Proud. So I'm actually in my wife's riding arena right now. She's been actually riding out here the last couple days. But we got the blue first gen back, so I'm gonna show you around that and the new pump that they got put on it, $2,300. They did a full new pump on it. They said that the seal, it was more than just seal problems. It was seal problems, an actual mechanical pump issues on the inside of the pump that were wore down after they did further inspection. They said that it was only a matter of time before they ran into bigger problems. So they sent the pump off to be rebuilt and they put a brand new one in there for me that was remanufactured. That's great. Let me show you around that right now. Got the old W350LE right there. We did just get a winner drawn for this. However, I cannot announce who it is because they have not been called yet. I know, the suspense is killing everybody. There's a winner drawn, however, not yet called. Next video, we will have somebody actually revealed to everybody so stay keep your phones ready though because somebody is going to be getting called on that truck plus five grand here soon here's the butte in all of her glory finally going to be able to get that beautiful parts truck put to good use hopefully it's good use so here's this pump they replaced the entire thing they said that it just needed completely replaced they, they did the whole pump so it's got, of course, all new seals and new machining on the inside with certain parts and all that stuff. I mean, it's it's great. They got a whole new fuel line in right there. Just some other assorted stuff. But uh, it fires right up now with no leaks, no problems, nothing. It's, it's actually really great. So the next steps are going to be the bed's shot, the doors are shot, the hood is crinkled right there. So we're going to be doing this bed swapped over. These doors are going to go on this truck. The fenders are gonna go on this truck, that hood's gonna go on this truck, that grill is gonna go on this truck, cause this truck's got a big old cracked grill, all the stuff is just faded, the chrome is all crinkled and chipping and clips are broke on it. That one is in absolutely beautiful shape. Same with the bumper, this bumper's not that bad, but that one's definitely a lot cleaner, so we probably are gonna swap that bumper over to this one and then maybe just get new plastics for it, but other than that, that's that's most of the swap. I'm trying to debate on the interior, do I go with the red interior and try to swap it over, or do I just try to find, you know, the blue interior parts that I need and leave that interior alone and just part that up to somebody else who really needs it for their truck that is specifically looking for red. I don't know, but so that's where we're at with that truck. Big news for everybody, this is our next giveaway truck. Giveaway is not live yet, but starting April 3rd, you can enter to win this truck plus $5,000 cash. This whole kind of like COVID-19 thing, I think is getting ready to pass over. Yes, it's an actual concern, but I was actually sharing with some people on social media recently, because there are people like, oh my gosh, people are dropping dead left and right. And I'm like, okay, it is unfortunate. It's not a good situation for anybody that has to be affected by it. But when you look at the stats of the things that people do not mention, do not talk about, over 7,000 542 people die every single day in the United States from causes that are completely unrelated to COVID-19, completely unrelated. And on top of that, over 1,780 plus abortions, which is the murder of basically fetuses, you know, babies in the womb, in a mother's womb, every single day. And that's like an average number. Some days it's way above that, some days it's a little bit lower, but that's a daily average just in the United States. So if you're asking me, in reality, you really can't, you're not gonna be able to save every single life. That, that is the reality of it, and it sucks to say that, and I know some people are gonna take that as like, oh my gosh, you don't care about people. That's not what I'm saying, but you guys have to face reality. Think about those other stats that I just shared with you, and those are real stats from the CDC's website. Nobody's talking about that stuff, because nobody cares. It's all stuff that they've heard about before, so to them, doesn't matter, it's not gonna get views, it's not gonna get clicks, it's not gonna you know, increase their ratings on their channels, so it doesn't matter to them. But the stats show you are more likely to die driving to that grocery store to hoard that toilet paper and canned food than you are to actually die from COVID-19. Just think about that. If you ask me, it's just like any other little sickness or cold or little 
thing that you can catch and it could harm you. Just like anything else that's already out there. The difference is people are using it as leverage to put fear and panic into people. Don't overwhelm yourself with fear over something that you have no control over. There are so many more things to actually be concerning ourselves with that we are just completely disregarding. So anyways, now that that rant is out of the way, I just thought those were some stats I should share with you guys just to kind of eye open the reality of the world that we live in and how people will take things and blow them out of proportion just to put fear into me and you for their own advantage. All that aside, this is the next giveaway truck and I'm going to be leaving it pretty much how you see it other than a couple small things. That giveaway opens April 3rd. We are running a really good deal for the first four or five days so make sure you guys stay tuned because when that giveaway goes live, you're not gonna wanna miss it. Now I'm gonna sneak on back into the barn here. Careful. <laughs> Careful, stinking horses. But um, anyways, I'm gonna come back in here and I wanna show you something. Get some light on in here. But anyways, so hopefully guys can see this. This is where we are at with the progress of the ceiling. We did end up actually doing something a little bit different than we were originally doing and let me kind of explain the tactic behind this and the reason for it. So if you look over here, you'll see that we were running all of our two by fours, basically with the direction of the steel, which I thought originally when I did that, I was like, okay, this is gonna be stronger. It's gonna be more weight bearing and more, you know, weight tolerant and everything else. It's gonna be great because there's gonna be more strength in the two by fours. Well, it's more strength in the two by fours going side to side. Like if you were gonna have a floor up on top, which we're not, but if you were, strength wise, that makes more sense. Shorter span, you know, up on its side. So there's more weight, like stability. If you were to put weight down on those two by fours from up top, etc. The problem is then it creates a little bit of instability throughout the middle of the sheets of steel because there's no contact points going across the centers anywhere in multiple spots. So what we decided to do, and this was an idea from a subscriber. If it's a great idea to some of you, cool. If some of you guys say, no, I would have done that way. I'm sorry. That's the way we're going with it right now. And the light we dropped temporarily just to get it out of the way. But that way the wiring is accessible for when we put in some LEDs and stuff. But anyways, we started to run two by fours like so, which would be one going straight back and forth between the rafters. And we're using that as a stability board to run then full 10 footers from that point to that point. But then just on the other side of that two by four, we're going to create another stretch like that. And then that's probably gonna complete this span pretty much to where then we have tons of contact points side to side to side to side, which then if you look at our steel here, look at all these contact points, all these rows of contact points with the um, sheet metal screws that we actually have. And it's so much stronger. I was literally doing the monkey bars on these things because I'm like, okay, if this thing, if this stuff can't hold me, you know, dangling around on this thing, I said, then I'm not gonna hang steel on it. So I wanted to test it and it's really not the highest nine foot, but you know, I uh, did the monkey bars on that back and forth. I'm like, th this is good. I mean, this was like hard. There was hardly any flex whatsoever in those boards. I mean, they were, they were sturdy. Hopefully guys can see the reasoning behind going back and forth like that and then tying it into the rafters then going back and forth like that again. It just gives us way more contact points that we don't have any sag in our steel. Guys, hopefully you understand what I was saying there. And I want to touch on that one topic one last time. I'm not saying people's lives don't matter, not in the slightest bit, because I am extremely pro-life and I care about people. All I was trying to get across with my statement was the fact that there are far more things people could actually be concerning themselves with that we have control over, that we could make changes for, that nobody does. There are far more options of things to um, try to work towards. What are you doing, bud? He's been trying to dig under the stinking, he's been trying to dig under the gate. He ain't getting out of there, bud. But anyways, guys, that's all my point was. Don't stress yourselves out over that stuff and freak yourself out. Stay safe out there. I'll catch you guys in the next video.